And we are live. Okay, just waiting a bit for everybody to join us. Uh, so, the the next speaker is Alexi Grigorev, lead data scientist from OLX Group. That uh, OLX Group is also the day sponsor of uh, Future Works Tech Conference, and. Um, Alexi is going to talk us about what really makes a senior developer. I mean, this is, is quite close to me. I used to be a, a software developer myself, and I'm really excited for this talk. I hope you guys uh, are as well. So the way this is going to do is like you leave your questions by the end of the, of the session. Uh, I will be reading them to Alexi to, to answer you answer them okay so please uh, uh, you can share them on the feed on the q a section don't be shy leave your questions uh, as the the presentation go by and at the end i will read them to to alexi and alexi will answer them okay so alexi are you ready i am yes okay so the stage is yours thank you hi everyone for coming uh, hi thanks everyone for coming so let me share my screen works so today the topic uh, well, like today i'll talk about uh, senior developers and we'll uh, discuss what uh, senior actually means uh, so what does it mean and uh, how we how one can become a senior developer um, so let's start um, so um, a senior developer is uh, yeah so like uh, there is no uh, one definition for a senior developer and usually it feels like a senior is somebody who is uh, a jack of all trades who can do pretty much everything and feels like uh, uh, especially during the talk today maybe it will feel like that for you as well that this is somebody who is too good to be true who is too good to be to exist um, so this is uh, fine. So maybe, uh, like, of course, nobody is perfect. And this is uh, maybe I'll talk about an ideal situation, an ideal um, image of a senior developer. Um, and I want to also add that I work as a lead data scientist, as a data scientist. So I am not uh, a developer, even though these roles are similar. And I think the definition of um, the definition of similar is uh, the definition of senior is similar across different roles. Um, so for developers, uh, for designers, for data scientists, for data analysts, uh, um, for pretty much everyone uh, working in IT, I think the definition of a senior is uh, pretty similar. Um, so it uh, shouldn't matter at the end that uh, my position is a data scientist rather than uh, a software engineer. But I might be also a bit biased because of uh, my background. And also I want to add that uh, I work at Elix and I want to add that uh, what I'm saying here is my personal opinion. And uh, it doesn't necessarily reflect the definition of a senior at Elix. There are some similarities, uh, but I also talked to many people who do not work at Elix and collected uh, their feedback, uh, what they think about this role, and this is what I'm going to present. Although there are many similarities. So for today, um, we have the following plan. So first we'll talk about the de definition of different roles. Uh, so senior is not the only role that we have. Uh, it, like that's not the only seniority level we have. There are different uh, seniority levels and we'll talk uh, about them briefly. Then we'll talk what makes a developer senior. So what are the qualities um, of a senior developer? And then finally, we'll talk about how, uh, how to become a senior developer. And let's start with uh, the career progression. So you probably all know that, that uh, first we have a junior developer, then we have a middle level professional, then we have a senior, and then it branches to an expert track and a managerial track. And this role in the in the middle senior, this is what we want to do. Or we want to talk about. So usually this is like uh, uh, somebody with already a lot of responsibilities, and often after this uh, after this step, uh, uh, 
people decide whether they want they want to go to uh, continue with the expert track or they want to go to the managerial track and the thing we will cover today is actually this transition from middle to senior well, this will be the main topic uh, but first let's talk about uh, actually these three squares like these three first stages junior middle and senior uh, junior is somebody usually who is uh, quite uh, uh, fresh maybe a college graduate uh, a bootcamp graduate uh, so usually uh, these are people who do not have uh, a lot of experience um, but they already can work on things independently so they can already make product impact uh, possibly with supervision with help from middle uh, developers or senior developers and usually juniors quite uh, quickly become uh, middle level professionals uh, and uh, usually most uh, like the majority of uh, um, of professionals uh, of IT workforce they are on this uh, level so they can work independently they take active part in planning task prioritization so they are pretty independent and they can do uh, like if they are assigned a piece of work they usually can uh, get this done but uh, coming to a senior role so senior uh, role involves more responsibilities than uh, uh, a middle-level professional professional so usually um, seniors are people who work independently on very complex tasks and uh, they don't just work uh, like independently here I mean they can work independently if they need but they can also work together uh, with entire team and they are usually leading a couple of projects in a team and by leading I mean uh, they can take uh, any technical and non-technical decisions they think what should be included uh, what should not uh, like which technologies to use so they are they know the project well enough so they can take decisions there and then to actually be able to do this to take these decisions they need to communicate a lot with different people um, so-called stakeholders people who are interested in success of these projects so they need to talk to them a lot uh, to understand uh, what should be done what shouldn't be done so they basically own this piece of project or entire project end-to-end -end. Uh, and then here I have ML solutions ML stands for machine learning because uh, uh, originally this material was coming from uh, data scientists but it actually doesn't matter as I said the definition of senior is similar for all the roles and uh, in case of developers so we have some problem to solve and then a senior is somebody who can solve this problem end-to-end -end. and by end-to-end -end, I mean um, figuring out what the problem is is it worth solving uh, communicating with st stakeholders to uh, understand the requirements then decomposing the tasks uh, into smaller tasks and then of course having less senior team members uh, uh, by showing how to solve these tasks by bending them um, and basically teaching and uh, sharing knowledge and uh, so this is quite like a, uh, maybe it feels like uh, there is a lot going on between these two roles like the, the difference is large is huge so it may feel like okay this this person is too good to to be true it's too good to uh, to exist um, and uh, it might be so it, actually in some cases uh, in some companies uh, a person like that would be already would be called a lead uh, a lead developer um, even though in my opinion a lead is somebody who um, who like a senior is somebody who still has a lot of hands-on activities so they are still very deep in the code but leads some are somebody like are people who uh, who do this more often uh, than hands-on activities and because uh, senior uh, like this is quite a challenge like it's quite a lot of responsibilities in some companies actually the pro career progression is different from what I showed you previously and the branching uh, branching between a career track and uh, um, branching between a managerial track and uh, uh, expert track happens after the medial, m middle level so in the previous picture it was that uh, after senior somebody can decide whether they want to go to uh, a manager become a manager or 
continue the technical track in some companies it actually happens after the middle level because senior is some sort of technical lead already and um, uh, so we briefly talked about different roles we talked also about a senior like what a senior means but let's uh, talk a bit more about this and to prepare for this part I actually talked to um, many different people to managers I wanted to understand I wanted to ask them in their opinion what makes a developer senior uh, I asked uh, the uh, I asked manager I asked uh, senior developers um, and uh, even people who are above um, the at the manager level like head of and I asked them what makes a de developer uh, senior what are the qualities that I want to share with, with you the summary of uh, what I heard um, so first thing is that uh, senior developers they know a project really well uh, it can be a big project it can be even a couple of projects or it can be a small uh, a part of a big project but they really know this part of a project well they know how it works they know uh, like uh, basically everything like all the uh, all the shortcuts they like the team need to needed to make at some point uh, uh, like where the, there are problems where is the technical debt and they have this knowledge and uh, with this knowledge they can take decisions there so if let's say somebody comes uh, from a different team a stakeholder saying hey can you implement this they can already imagine how this uh, will happen how this will be implemented what kind of decisions need to like what they need to decide what kind of technologies to use uh, how exactly to implement this um, um, then other uh, thing that was coming up in answers pretty often was that uh, senior developers uh, work really well with a team and they can uh, delegate uh, tasks to junior uh, junior members uh, or they can work together share knowledge do pair programming all that but they can also work independently so if they need they can just uh, do they can just go and solve a problem uh, and this work involves a lot of communication with the, their own team with uh, the external stakeholders uh, with uh, like if you need to solve a problem you really need to understand what the problem is and it involves a lot of communication and then also once something is solved um, they also need to tell uh, about the, the results uh, I mentioned that already but uh, I think everyone who I asked uh, told me that that a senior is somebody who shares knowledge who mentors uh, uh, juniors so it's not like they are great experts and just keep their knowledge to themselves they also make sure that the team becomes better and uh, uh, one person told me that uh, I really liked it uh, that a senior somebody who can solve a problem even if they don't know how to do this so they will uh, when they a senior sees a blocker it will not stop uh, them from solving the problem they will find a way they will find somebody uh, to um, to help them to unblock them and uh, uh, if something doesn't work then they will find a different way to solve a problem um, and then one of the managers basically said that uh, he's sure that uh, when he gives a task to a senior he's sure that this task will happen and this person this senior will find a way to to get it done and then often we have a, a, a set of direct responsibilities that we have like uh, in case of a data scientist for example it's a person who trains a model prepares data in case of a javascript developer it's a person who who is mostly involved in front-end work but uh, from what I heard and I agree with that is uh, a senior is somebody who is not afraid to step out of direct responsibilities uh, if we're talking a senior about a senior javascript developer uh, if they need to implement something and uh, they see a back end backend and backend developers are busy doing something else nothing stops them from actually going to this backend service and fixing the problem there or again talking to st stakeholders usually is not a direct responsibility but it really helps uh, with communication uh, with everyone 
Um, then uh, another important topic is uh, when you come to a senior and uh, with a task, especially if it's somebody who is not technical, they just come to this person and say, we have this problem. And usually it's super ambiguous. It's not clear how to solve it. Um, what are the possible solutions and uh, what is the actual problem? And they work together with product manager, with these uh, stakeholders, with uh, everyone affected to understand the problem, to think how to technically, like what is the uh, possible technical solution and then decompose this uh, into simple, clear, clear steps that can be assigned to more junior members. And finally, this is somebody who is uh, pragmatic, so somebody who will not spend uh, a lot of time uh, making sure that there is 100% uh, code coverage when it's uh, just a prototype and maybe you don't need to, like it's not clear whether this project will not will work or not. And sometimes uh, yeah, it makes sense to move faster, for example, rather than spending too much time on making everything perfect. And uh, from what I said, it feels like, okay, this person is probably already a manager or a technical lead or something. But again, still, this is somebody who is uh, pretty hands-on. So maybe at least 50% uh, uh, coding, but they have, they have this technical excellence. They know uh, all these things. They follow best engineering practices. And then when they deliver a solution, uh, like this is technically best solution. Like it's a great solution. Uh, of course, taking into account all possible trade-offs. And uh, one last but not least is uh, usually these people, they are, um, of course, they are close with uh, products, so they know uh, what is the problem they are solving, right? So it's not like the, the code that uh, they produce is not just uh, for the sake of this. They usually understand that uh, we produce, like they produce code because it helps to solve a specific problem. And to summarize that, to summarize all these things that I collected, so I, I see that there are kind of five um, re recurring topics, five recurring themes, is ownership. So end-to-end -end ownership is basically, uh, they, can, uh, they know what's going on in a particular part of a project and they can take any decisions there. They communicate with the team, uh, and with uh, they work well with the team. They communicate with everyone who needs communication. Um, they can decompose different uh, difficult tasks into simpler ones. They have the technical experience uh, and excellence to implement all, all that. And they have this product feeling uh, and they know why they are solving some things. And uh, yeah, that looks like quite a lot of things, right? We already... Uh, talked about this and uh, especially when you hear all that you think okay like uh, two things like how uh, is it possible like that one person can do all that and then second uh, how do I become that person and this is something we'll talk now talk about now and uh, uh, like uh, maybe it's funny but when you ask somebody hey how do I become a person? And then what you can hear is like to become, uh, like how to, do I become senior? And then um, like what you can hear is to become a senior officially, you need to become a senior unofficially. So basically uh, you need to behave like a senior before you can be uh, officially a senior, like officially promoted uh, to a senior role. And then one thing I can suggest is uh, find somebody in your team, in your company, who, uh, like, who is a good role model and just to try to act like that, try to help them uh, uh, behave in the, the way they behave, handle all the communication, the way they do, uh, basically uh, learn from them. And uh, I again did the same thing like as previously, but uh, now, instead of talking to managers, I talk to people who were middle developers and they get they got promotions to uh, senior levels. And then I ask them, what did you have to do to actually to to get this promotion? Like, what did you know, did you need to do to to get promoted? And these are the questions I got, uh, answers I got. So uh, I took a complete ownership of one project simplified it and uh, showed others how to use it. So it again, we, we 
come back to what we discussed previously. So there is a piece of project and then somebody, if somebody takes it and learns it really well uh, to the point that uh, they can make any decisions there and they can start simplifying it and also showing others how how you can work with this code, then this is a good recipe to become a senior developer. Then another thing uh, uh, was uh, that uh, one person who shared it with me, um, like in their project, the, there was one, like in their uh, product team there where they worked, uh, one project was legacy. Probably this is a familiar situation for uh, many people. So there is one maybe new project, but there is one legacy project that no one wants to work with. And the tasks there are not clear. It's not clear how to solve them. Uh, the code is mess and nobody wants to actually work with this code. But this person said that he volunteered to actually take all these tasks and by doing that, he learned the project really well and uh, he basically could implement everything there, simplify things, and this is how he got promoted. Um, and uh, we also talked about, like in addition to ownership, we talked about other things like communication also, and especially when you're uh, coming up with a new service or a new feature, um, you need to be able to uh, design uh, an architecture of this service in a way that, uh, um, like it's maintainable and all that. Um, so uh, that person told me that uh, they were driving these uh, application design meetings, uh, collecting all this information from others and basically coming up with a good architecture. And then of course, during the process, uh, um, you can see that there are some things uh, probably that could happen. And if you practically warn about these things, that could also be a good uh, thing to to put uh, on your list uh, for uh, things to do, like to become a senior. Um, and then also, this is quite interesting, is that one person said that uh, uh, representing the company in external conferences helped, um, helped him a lot to actually uh, uh, to get promotion, to be recognized. So this is uh, like, uh, getting external visibility, like speaking at conferences. And then if you get external visibility, you can also get internal visibility and people will uh, recognize your achievements. So this is one, one of the tips I got that, uh, like if you want to get noticed, speak at external conferences and then probably uh, uh, you, like your work will uh, get what it really desires, deserves. And uh, it's not, just about presenting things uh, externally. Sometimes, uh, like not uh, well, maybe not everyone likes to, to, to talk about things externally. Presenting things inter internally regularly also is a good idea, mostly because of no knowledge sharing. So this is how you can share your knowledge with the rest of the team by doing different tech talks, uh, um, technical talks inside your team by doing different workshops. Uh, instead of keeping all the knowledge you have, you share it proactively with your team. This way you help team become more effective. And uh, of course, this is one of the characteristics that managers uh, want to see in seniors. Uh, and then uh, uh, one person said that um, uh, they became a senior by uh, first identifying a problem. This is again, uh, like it comes to, to ownership, like, okay, there is a problem. And uh, yeah, so this problem needs solving. So this person came up with a solution, with a plan, uh, found support from uh, like other developers who could help them and uh, basically execute that. And that was like, I think this is a very strong signal that if a person does that, that they are senior already and needs need to be promoted. And then um, just to summarize all what I presented. Um, so from all these, um, uh, from all these answers, I think I saw um, five, uh, five things uh, that uh, you can do to get promoted. First, you take ownership and that end to end ownership also includes communication. So it's not just technical things. You also talk to stakeholders, to product managers. You really want to understand that you're solving the right thing. Then you also work on processes, uh, 
like not just uh, you know sitting there uh, so like writing code you also work uh, helping others work on that uh, talking to stakeholders again like iterating uh, quickly getting feedback uh, from iterations quickly so um, using process or even establishing processes and then, of course, you need to share the knowledge, knowledge, your knowledge with others by teaching or mentoring, and then getting internal and external visibility also helps. And you may notice that here in all these things, in all these answers, technical topics didn't really come up often. Uh, so it did come up a couple of times, but mostly it was about more like soft stuff, like um, teamwork, uh, being visible, uh, uh, following processes, taking ownership of a part of a project and things like that. So you, you can see that uh, it's not about technical, uh, it's not about uh, technical things. It's more like how you uh, how you behave, like more like uh, more like soft skills. And I think this is the main difference, in my opinion, between uh, a middle level professional and a senior is that they uh, they just do like they, they do these things. Um, and one last thing, um, uh, in my personal opinion, that uh, um, it's okay if you don't want to do all these things. Like if you just want to uh, sit there and produce code, and you don't want to talk to stakeholders, you don't want to, you know, talk at conferences, you don't want to, uh, you know, work with uh, this legacy code uh, and uh, take ownership of that it's totally fine. Like not everyone needs to be senior, not everyone needs to be a superstar, not everyone needs to be this unicorn, right? And uh, companies need uh, uh, also people who just go there, uh, do their job and uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, what I want to say here is like, you don't need to be, to get obsessed uh, about becoming a senior if you think that maybe it's not uh, a thing you want to do. And, um, with that, I'm uh, pretty much done. So we talked about career progression, possible steps. We uh, talked uh, uh, like what actually makes a developer senior. Um, uh, like uh, uh, I showed you uh, answers I got from different engineering managers uh, with their opinion. And also uh, I shared with you the answers of people who got promoted. And I shared with you how they became senior developers. And uh, just to finish it, um, like just a key, uh, like a few key takeaway messages. Um, seniors, uh, senior developers can find a way to solve any task, no matter how complex this task is. Or they can also say, okay, this task is not worth solving or basically, but they, they take ownership of this thing and uh, they do it end to end and uh, if there is a blocker, they find a way how to bypass this blocker. And of course, they teach others. And uh, to become a senior, you need to become a senior unofficially. And the best way of doing this is find a senior uh, in your company and try to act like them. And that's all. And uh, I want to advertise a book. So even though it's not, it's a bit of topic uh, for, for today's talk, but I am writing a book about machine learning. And if you as a developer want to uh, learn about machine learning, uh, uh, this is the best book for you. So it teaches and uh, like the target audience for this book is uh, uh, developers who want to get into data science and machine learning. So you can, if you just go to Google and uh, type machine learning book camp, you'll find this book. And then finally, if you want to ask me a question after this conference, if you want to find me on the internet, the best way of uh, doing that is datatalks.club. This is a Slack community. It's again, mostly focused on data specialists, uh, but not only that, so the, the community, like there you can also talk about different engineering topics. And if you want to uh, find me, this is the best place, but you can also find me on LinkedIn and Twitter, and uh, you can also shoot me an email. And uh, I think that's all. And uh, uh, I don't think I have uh, a lot of time to answer questions. Uh, we are crossing the, the finish line here, but uh, I mean, we have a couple of questions here, maybe a 
a brief answer and uh, then we'll proceed the, the conversation in the lounge. Mm -hmm. uh, so first question we have, do seniors also feel the imposter syndrome? Of course, yes. Um, I work as a lead and lead is a role after seniors. So I'm, um, I'm not a manager, I'm an expert. I'm on the expert track. And yeah, like basically I have to deal with this uh, every day. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's what happens is to somehow calibrate, to talk to other people, see how they are doing, and then try to uh, look at yourself externally, not internally. Like by, I mean, looking like, hmm, maybe just writing down all your achievements and looking at these achievements, uh, like at least for me personally helps. And like, um, I think it's called a Bragg document, if you Google that Bragg document. Uh, that helps me personally, but still like I have to deal with this pretty much uh, every day. And then having a document like that to remind me that I'm actually not an imposter is helpful. A pep talk to yourself, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, and the next question, um, Karen says a bit off topic, but what would you say it's important to go from junior to middle developer? Yeah, well, uh, just, uh, <laughs> I, I think um, I just do your work and then it will happen. That's probably <laughs> like don't uh, one thing though that uh, when you do this, don't take defensive positions. Like uh, when somebody is trying to to show you some things, don't uh, uh, you know act defensively. That's probably the only thing you can do not to to become a middle. Uh, but then apart from that, if you're already junior, give it uh, half a year, a year, and then you'll get uh, uh, the middle level promotion. Okay, great, Alexi. Uh, uh, people here attending us, uh, this was Alexi Grigorev. He will be on the lounge after. So if you guys want to ask something or uh, talk with uh, Alexi, he shared his contacts on the presentation, but you can do it more personally right now in the lounge. Uh, so please feel free and hang around. We'll have more sessions in about 15 minutes or so. Uh, it was a pleasure, Alexi. Thank you so much for being here. And this is it. Thank you. See you. <laughs>